Hey, Curious Kids, Kevin here. Today on A Place Called Space, we are going to learn about how long it takes to get to Mars. Inflatable Mars. Oh, you can't see the bottom. You got to step up. Mars Next t-shirt. We got Mars over here. And in the intro that you were waiting on, we had our little squishy Mars here. So last week we learned about the space shuttle because Wes from Texas and Cindy from Wisconsin were asking questions and wanted that to be a topic. So to start off today's lesson, I got a very special video from a famous person, you could call him a celebrity, to jump into today's topic. There we go. How's it going everyone? It's Lance Bass here, and I got into space at a very young age. I went to space camp when I was young, but before that, my grandfather and my dad are the ones who really got me looking up. Uh, they took me to my first shuttle launch in Florida, uh, when I was like seven or eight years old. And since then, I was obsessed. I knew I wanted to become an astronaut. Um, something real fun that I think you should know is how fast things are flying up there. The International Space Station goes over 17,000 miles an hour. Imagine 17,000 miles an hour. That's pretty fast. And I would like to ask a question too, because I would love to learn more about how fast it does take to get to certain places in the universe. Um, say, how long would it take us to get from Earth to Mars? And then how long would it take us to get from Earth to the closest star to us? So uh, yeah, maybe give us a lesson on that. All right, guys, thank you so much. See you later. Awesome, thank you, Lance. So that was Lance Bass. I grew up listening to his music. He was a member of InSync, and he has a great couple of questions to jump us into a place called space today. So we're going to tackle the first one, Mars, in the beginning, and then we're going to move on to our closest star. I'm going to tell you what the name of that is, how far away it is, and how long it would take us to hypothetically get there, because we haven't gone there yet. All right, so we are going from Earth to Mars. So we've sent a bunch of robots there. There's one over here, you can see the, the head, all right? So that is Mars Curiosity. We are launching Mars Perseverance rover from Earth in July, sending it all the way to Mars, and that is going to land in February of 2021. So how long is that? We got July 2020 all the way to February of 2021. It's approximately seven months to go from Earth to Mars with that rover. Now Mars Curiosity, took about eight and a half months, a little bit longer. Why? Well, things are moving. Earth is moving, right? And so is Mars. I'm going to draw this out for you in just a couple of minutes. But we had InSight. So the InSight lander landed two years ago. I think it might even be today, two years ago today, or the launch was today, one of those two. And that took about six months. So it's a little bit shorter, six months. So we're looking at like six to seven months, right? Well, if we have New Horizons, so that's a spacecraft that went out to Pluto, if it was on a straight line from Earth all the way to Mars, it would only take 39 days. 39 days? So why are these other spacecrafts taking six to nine months? What's going on with that? Well, we're going to bring up baby Kevin again, and we are going to learn all about it. So I'm going to draw up some stuff, so I'm going to need to rotate you so you can see me as I'm trying to draw what we're learning about today. So we've got to get rid of our aliens. We have not found aliens yet on Mars. So we're going to start off by drawing out like the solar system. So I'm going to draw my sun here in the middle. Whoop. S for sun. Okay. Next we got Earth. So we're going to use blue for Earth. So we're going to draw Earth's orbit. We're going to do a dotted, or no, we'll do a, we'll do a solid circle line. So Earth, let's say, is like this far around the sun. So let me erase a little bit, make our Earth not to scale, all right? The Earth and the sun, a lot further apart, a lot different sizes. But this is what we're just drawing today. So now we need Mars. So Mars is the red planet, so I'm going to have to go back to red. So Mars' orbit around the sun, let's say it's like this, okay? Just like that. So that's a bad circle. Doo -doo 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 -doo. That's that's still bad. That's still bad. We gotta we gotta improve upon this. All right. Let's do. 
All right, that looks a little bit better. It's a little squiggly, a little bumpy. So let's draw Mars here. So we got our planet M for Mars. So this is kind of like how you, you think the solar system is set up, right? So we got the sun, we got Mercury, Venus, then Earth, and then we got Mars, all right? So this, this looks pretty good. They're pretty close here. So we got our orbits, but at this point, they are the closest to each other. And we got a word for this one. It's called opposition. So let me write that down. So when we're right here, dropping stuff, we've got opposition. I'll write that bigger. And I'll put it up top. Or no, we'll put it down here. So op, opposition. So that's a big science word, right? So opposition is when Mars and Earth are the closest and on the same side of the sun. So how do you remember that? Opposition is like an opponent. You know, so if you're fighting someone or you're against somebody in a competition, that's your opponent and they're close. They're like right in front of you. Does that make sense? Cool. So if you've got questions uh, during today's episode, please put them in the comments. I'm going to try and address them as we're going along. So if you've got any hesitations or you're not exactly understanding something that I'm saying, Put it in the questions, in the comments down below, and we'll make sure I get them answered for you. But so Earth and Mars are moving. Where'd Earth go? There's Earth. Earth and Mars, they're moving around the sun, right? They're moving. So they're not always in that same position. Because how long does it take for Earth to go around the sun once? One year is 365 days, okay? But Mars is further out. And it's going slower. It takes longer for Mars to go all the way around the sun. It takes 687 days for Mars to go around the sun. So there are times where Mars isn't close to Earth over here at all. There are some times where Mars is actually all the way over here. So we're going to use black to do this one. So if my Mars, got to erase over here, if Mars is on this side, put the M for Mars, look how far away it is from Earth. So that's the furthest that they can be apart, right? So it's over there. It would take a lot longer to get to Mars, right? So what do we call this one? Write this one on top. This one is called conjunction. Another big word. Conjunction. So conjunction is when Mars is on the opposite side of the sun from Earth. So that's pretty far away. How far away is it? Let's see what color do I want to use? Let's use let's use green. I keep my green back here for, for special stuff. So green. So how far exactly away is it? Right? So Earth to Mars at this close part, at conjunction, is, well, do you want to use kilometers or should we use miles? I'm a big fan of kilometers, so we're going to start with that one. So opposition, so this one is where Earth to Mars, so right here, this is 55 million, 55 million kilometers, km is kilometers. That's a lot of kilometers, and that's where it is at the closest part. All right, so what is that in miles? Because you probably want to know. So that's 34 million miles. We'll just do MI for miles there. Okay, so that's a pretty big distance, but that's the closest. So how far away is it on the furthest? So if we got Earth, and if we drew a direct line here between Earth and the Sun, this distance, is we're gonna put it up over here. So this one again, kilometers. We're gonna start off with that. Sorry, move the camera a little bit. Put that back. There we go. So this one, I'm gonna jump over here real quick. Is you can see over here, 225 million kilometers. That's so far. 225 million kilometers. All right, miles. What do you want? 140 million, and then we'll do MI for miles. Miles, again, let's put the dot over here so we're consistent. 
So it's pretty far away, right? So when we're trying to go to Mars, the best place to go would be when we're close, right? But so we're moving around. So if we want it to be the closest, let's say here, we got Mars. There it is. So Mars is going around. And let's say Earth is right here. So we kind of want to launch when Earth and Mars are almost like this. So that our spacecraft, as it's going out there, will get to Mars as it gets closer. So we got to do it as it's moving. It's like if you're playing football or soccer. If you're fo playing football, right, and you're sending your quarterback, you got the football, which is Mars, and you're sending a wide receiver down, do you throw it to where they are or where they're running to? You throw it to where they're running to so they can keep running and catch it. That's what we're doing when we're sending spacecrafts to Mars. We're throwing them out to Mars, but Mars isn't there yet. When Mars does get there, they'll get there at the same time. They'll get there at the same time, and then they'll be able to land. And then that's going to be the shortest distance that we can figure out. Because we don't want to try and launch when it's all the way over here, because that's going to take forever. So if we got them all moving around together, this closest point occurs about every 26 months. Let me write that down. 26. Oh, running out of ink. There it is. About every 26 months, they're going to line up where they're at the closest part, and that's when we like to launch stuff to Mars. Would I want to go to Mars, asked Glenn? Yes, but not one of the first people. So I would take, I would wait a ways, a long time until they, they figure it all out. Once they got, you know, indoor plumbing and they got TV, internet, and everything's safe and we don't have any like explosions and stuff, then I'll go to Mars. But I want to I wanna take my time. Does this mean we can only land on certain areas on Mars from Tapasweeney uh, and India, I believe? No. So we can fly on other sides of Mars. So once we get to Mars, right, once we get to Mars, let me, to answer this question, baby Kevin's going to go away and big Kevin's going to come back. All right. So Let's imagine, boom, this is what we're going to land on Mars. So it's like we're throwing, if this is the point where they're going to meet. So we're throwing them, and they can come here. And then once we get here, we go into orbit around Mars, right? So let's say we come in on this side, and then we start orbiting Mars. So then when we're orbiting Mars, we can figure out exactly when we want to fire our rocket engines to then go into Mars and land. So it could be here, it could be here, and it could be here. So we don't just throw it and then see what happens. When we're flying out to Mars, we have little engines that move us. You know, are we, are we going to miss it? Do we need to, instead of go this way, we need to fire a little rocket engine so we can get this way. Or maybe we accidentally went too far this way. We need to fire a rocket engine to get back this way. So good question, Tapas Sweeney. We can land pretty much anywhere on Mars, but it depends how much fuel we want to use to make that happen. Great question. Great question. All right, so we got that. So we'll stay here. We'll stay Big Kevin for a second. All right, so we're launching off of the surface of Earth with like these rockets, right? It takes about eight minutes to get into outer space from Earth, like with the space shuttle that I got here. Which space shuttle, we're not using it anymore, if you remember from that episode. And it never went to the moon or to Mars. But about eight minutes to get into to space, and then six to nine months to go all the way out to Mars, all right? depending on how heavy you are, how big of a rocket we're using, and where Earth and Mars are as we're moving around the solar system, and then about eight minutes to land on the surface of Mars after we've gotten into Mars orbit. Or maybe we can just shoot right down, but it still takes about seven minutes to eight minutes to slow down all the way down there. Okay, so it's gonna take some time, right? Now humans to Mars. We haven't done that yet, but i got to go on my tippy toes again so you can see it says Mars next. Because this is the footprint on the moon. We want to go and have footprints on Mars. Can we do the same with the moon? I'll get to that in a second. I just saw a question. So, footprints on Mars. We haven't done it yet. You've seen the movie The Martian. It has us on Mars. It's a movie. It's not true. It's awesome, though. But if it were to happen, it might be like that. So, if we're sending humans to Mars, when is that going to happen? Well, initially, reports came out that it was going to be about 2030 or maybe 2033 is some of the stuff that we're talking about because Mars and Earth are going to be super close in 2033 because, bring back baby Kevin, 
Oh, where's baby Kevin? There he is. Okay. So I drew these as circles, right? The circles orbits. Well, the orbits, they're not really that circular. They're more kind of a little bit off of the circle. See that dotted line? So it's not a perfect circle. There are parts where they're closer than if they were circles, they would be closest all at the same time. But there's a little bit of movement going on. So in 2033, they're going to be the closest that they are, which means the least amount of energy or rocket fuel, you know, that we need to get to Earth to Mars. But we aren't having the money. We need a lot of money to go to space. And we're doing all these other things about observing Earth. We got the International Space Station. You know, we got astronauts. So to get these humans actually on Mars, 2033 doesn't look like it's going to happen anymore. I would love for it to happen. It's going to take some time. I'm guessing by 2050s for sure, we're going to have what I call sustainable. So that means it's not a one-way trip. You can go to Mars, you can hang out, and then you can come home. There have been talks of a 440, I think so, yeah, 440 round trip. So the eight minutes to get into space, and then, yeah, I'm using my astronaut as the, as the spaceship. And then about six uh, and a half months to get to Mars, eight minutes to get on the surface, about two months on the surface doing its stuff, and then launching, got those eight minutes, and then six and a half months back to Earth, and then, you know, like the eight minutes to land back down on the surface of Earth. So we could do it. There is a way to do that with 440 days. We just don't have all the technology figured out. So... Big thing, humans in space, we got to make sure our bodies are healthy, right? Because there's no gravity. So we're floating around. Gravity, you know, when you drop something, falls down. Then there's radiation. There's these particles, kind of like a big microwave. Oh, that's like, there's little things that excite all the, the molecules in your food, and that's what warms it up. So space, there's radiation that can hurt our bodies. And we got to figure out the right ways to protect us from that radiation and see what happens when we have a little bit of radiation. So we're still studying the biological, so that's the body, you know, us, effects of space. So that's why I'm thinking like 2050 is actually when that's going to happen. Now let's go back to baby Kevin, because I want to talk about these distances, right? Well, what if we just want to use the phone? What if we just want to make a call to a spacecraft that's out at Mars? Sorry, I didn't answer Top of Sweeney's question. So can we do the same thing on the moon? We can land at any place of the moon as well. It just depends on how many fuel, how much fuel we want to use to, to bring it with us. There's different amounts of energy. And that means different fuel to land on the moon. So a little late, just hopped on. Well, thank you for joining WDT Games. So we're learning about going humans to Mars. So if we want to use our telephone, right? So we're moving at the speed of light, which, put it over here is 300,000 kilometers per second. And for you other people's, 186,000 miles per second. So if we're going that fast, the speed of light, so if you turn on the light switch, light goes on super fast. All right, see if you can see the change. And light switch, light switch, super fast, right? If you're going at this speed, when we're the closest, it only takes... So closest, where do I want to draw this? We'll put it underneath opposition. It's only going to take three minutes. Three minutes to make a phone call to Mars when it's closest because you travel at the speed of light super fast. But when you're at conjunction up here, so when it's the furthest away, right, it is going to take 22, 22 minutes. 22 minutes to make that phone call up to Mars. So if we're talking to the Curiosity rover, that little head over there, and it's at the far part, all the way like over here, right? We're gonna send a signal, it takes 22 minutes to get there, it's gonna hear it, be like, okay, well I see this over here, and it's gonna take 22 minutes to travel all the way back to Earth. So it takes over 44 minutes to figure out what's going on if we send a signal and to get it back. So if we were traveling at the speed of light, that's how fast we could go to get there. But we can't do that. No, not yet. We are just working on trying to get there with humans, hopefully 2050. So that's how long it's going to take, maybe Kevin's going away, to get to Mars. 
is about six to nine months is what it takes for the robots and for humans to get to Mars. So make sure you bring a lot of snacks, maybe a book, uh, a video game, maybe a drawing pad, a camera to document, maybe a journal to write some stuff in, because it's going to be a long time that you need to spend in a spaceship, like quarantine, like if your apartment, like my office here, this is maybe the size I get to live in for six months going out to Mars. It's a little bit bigger, but that's a long time. So we got to be really mentally strong as well as physically strong oh. <laughs> to get out to Mars and survive. Okay, Mars, first question. Lance's second question was how long does it take humans or how long does it take to get from Earth to the nearest star? So I got two answers for you on this one. First off, our nearest star is the sun, right? The sun is a star. It's the star of our own solar system, but that's not what he's talking about. He wants to know the closest star outside of our solar system. So I'm going to go back over to baby Kevin. Baby Kevin's here. I need to erase this because I need to write some stuff down for us. So clean it up. Clean, 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 clean. All right. The closest star to us, we're going to write it in blue, is named, let's go on the top here. So Proxima, Proxima Centauri, C-E-N-T-A-U-R-I. Proxima Centauri is the closest star to us. That's not the sun. So, sun. The sun is only 93 million miles away, right? We learned about that. That's one AU if you were paying attention in the previous episodes. So how far away is this? So if we got Earth, see my E for Earth over there. Proxima Centauri, we're going to make uh, Proxima Centauri red. We're going to draw it a little bit bigger just so I can put the, the PC. So it's Proxima Centauri. What is the distance in purple? I like using different colors because it makes it fun. Right? So this distance. Whew. So we are we are moving right around the sun and the sun's moving throughout the galaxy, but these are on average, this is about how far away it is. Are you ready? 42 trillion. That's a big number. 42 trillion kilometers away. How big is 42 trillion? If we were to write it out though, right? So we got 42, so that's some zeros, it's a trillion, so that's billion, so that's million, thousand, oh, I missed a zero. Right, so this is hundreds, thousand, million, billion, trillion. That's a huge number, 42 trillion kilometers away. All right, so that's approximately 25, trillion miles because I know you, you might not like kilometers so we'll do 25 trillion miles too. All right I see a couple questions here. How will the astronauts brains be able to stay healthy and avoid the effects of radiation for these six to five months? So we're bringing humans to Mars. We're trying to figure that out. Uh, Top of Sweeney good question. And then Glenn how long would it take to get us to the closest star? We're getting there. We're getting there. All right so if you're traveling at the speed of light so remember, the speed of light, put it on this side, is the 300,000 kilometers per second, or 186,000 miles per second. Speed of light, that's the fastest that we can go. If you're traveling that fast, it is going to take you 4.2, what we call light years, right? Because it's traveling at the speed of light, light years. 4.2 years to get there traveling at the speed of light. That's a long time, and that's the fastest that we can go. Now, what if we were to go not as fast? So we want to send something there, but we can't send something at the speed of light. Well, we've got some mini robots, some mini robots that we're working on. And there, this hasn't been developed yet, but what we're trying to do is to send mini robots at 20% the speed of light. So let me write that down. The speed of light. 
Okay, so that would take us approximately 20 years to send mini robots at 20% the speed of light out to Proxima Centauri. Excuse me. <laughs> That's a really long time. And we don't have that capability yet. So what's the fastest that we can go? So far, the fastest we can go is the Solar Parker Probe. So I'm gonna write that down here. We gotta get out of camera for a little bit. So Solar, oh no, it's Parker Solar Probe. Mixing up my words. We got, you can still see this, yep. So I'm just gonna call it Parker. So the Parker Solar Probe, how fast is that going? It's going, well it's going to go, so it's building up speed, it's gonna go touch the surface of the sun. We talked about that in a previous episode. It is going 700,000 kilometers per hour. That's fast. Which, what, what is it in miles, Kevin? It's 430,000 miles per hour. So if we are traveling at that speed, the fastest thing that we have built as humans in space, going out to Proxima Centauri, how long is it gonna to take to get there? So we had 20 years with the speed of light, 20% the speed of light. Uh, if we're going a little bit slower, maybe 50 years, 100 years, 1,000 years, longer. I need, I need a great marker for this one. We're gonna do, we're gonna do the green, I need big. It's going to take, so I'm gonna write this down. When do you think I'll stop? There's a seven, then there's a zero, so at least 70, 700, 7,000 years to get to Proxima Centauri with the fastest spacecraft that we have built so far as humans. Are you going to be able to go there? Let's see. I got to block this out just a little bit so you can see it. Yeah. 7,000. I got a little reflection. 7,000 years to go out to Proxima Centauri. That's crazy long. So we haven't figured out exactly how to do long, long, long distances because we, we haven't even gone to Mars yet. But if we were to do it, that's how long it would take. Now, there's a movie out there. You may have heard it heard of it it is called passengers i'm gonna write this down so passengers so passengers is a movie that is about going to proxima centauri right and they have this ship called the avalon i think that's the name of it so the avalon so it is going to take 120 years 120 years in the avalon to get there that is theoretically, and by theoretically, it's like, it could be done, possible. How? Well, they're going to build up to 50% the speed of light. Speed of light. Now, build up to. What, is, what does that mean? So, we're going a little bit long. We're going to wrap this up in just a second. So, if we got Earth, we have to launch off of Earth. And here's... Here's our PC. We have to launch off of Earth, and then we have to build up that speed. So we have to build up our speed. This is speed, so we're going faster, faster, faster. And then we need to start slowing down. So this is us getting slower and slower and slower. Oh, you can't see that, sorry. There we go, so we got Earth, and we're building up that speed, and then we have to start slowing down. Because if we're going too fast, we're gonna shoot right by Proxima Centauri. We're not being able to stop and like land on the surface, get into orbit, you know, do all those things. So you can go super fast, but then you got to put on the brakes and slow down so you don't shoot past wherever you're going. That's the same thing with Mars. We, we can go fast, but then we need to slow ourselves down. So when we're traveling out there at like the 34 million miles, the 55 million kilometers, we can go super fast, but then we got to start slowing down so that we can land and not just crash into it or shoot past it? Yes, good question. All right, thank you. So yeah, we are learning about how long it takes to go to Mars. So about six to nine months to go out to Mars. And then if we're going to our closest star, that's Proxima Centauri, 4.2 years if we're traveling at the speed of light, 7,000 years with the fastest spaceship we've ever built, and potentially 120 years like in the movie Passengers, where they put us to sleep. So we just sleep and then we wake up and we're there, you know? So that's a possibility of sometime in the future of what we're doing. 
So think, let's all thank Lance for submitting those questions. I have put his social media links in the description below, his Instagram and his Twitter. So if you and your parents, your guardians, your mom, dad, brother, sister, someone who's old enough to use social media, want to go and say, hey Lance, thank you for coming on to a place called Space and giving us this question. And it was his birthday last week too, so you can say happy birthday. So those links are down below. Let them know that we really appreciated him coming on. And if you like this episode, click that thumbs up. Let me know you liked it. And of course, there is this side, this side, which side, which side, this side. It has the subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button to let me know if you're a fan of A Place Called Space, the whole channel, because we're going to be coming back to you on Thursday, Thursday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific time for another episode learning about things space. And if you've got a topic or a question that you want to submit, there is a link below where you can send me an email if you've got questions or specific topics that you want me to cover, just like what Lance did today. All right, thank you everyone for tuning in. And remember, always keep learning. Take care, everybody.